vanilla version of the story, and it's called A Little Soul. <clears throat> in truth, Douglas Miller did not really believe in the beauty of the English language. The four hours a week he spent studying the subject were wasted time to an unremarkable boy of 15. At least with French or German or Italian, there was some knowledge involved, vocab and hard facts, but to study his own language was like studying chewing or standing up. Language was a tool. Books were what you read on the beach when the sun was too bright for the screen on your phone. Of course, Douglas Miller was smart enough to know not to say this kind of thing out loud, and certainly not to Mr. Arnold, his sour, tobacco-toothed English teacher. But this is what he thought each week as he sat and stared, unseeing at the pages of Pride and Prejudice, To Kill a Mockingbird, or, worst of all, the love sonnets of that clown, Shakespeare. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. Hugo Barrett, the class's self-appointed poet, was reading aloud in that fluty, lilting voice of his, all swoops and glides, tossing his poet's hair to the delight of the drama girls who sat pouting, chins cupped in their hands at the sheer depth and beauty of it all. Douglas felt the chewed end of his pyro crack between his teeth and turned instead to the sports field, where a scrappy half-hearted soccer match was being played by sodden third years, shoulders hunched uselessly against the rain. It resembled a scene from a prison film, yet even that would be preferable to poetry. Miller? Mr. Miller? Douglas felt the suck of his hand on his cheek as he jerked straight. Uh, could you repeat the question, sir? Giggles in the front row. The bard, Mr. Arnold, was the kind of teacher who delighted more in his pupils' failure than their success. Please paraphrase into good modern English his meaning in the first quatrain, by which I mean anyone? The first four lines below to Hugo Barrett. Indeed, the first four lines. So, Douglas. Douglas skimmed the words. He means. He means his girlfriend is nothing special. Thank you, Mr. Miller, called Mr. Archer, verbally patting him on the head. You have the soul of a poet. <laughs> Douglas tasted ink on his lip. An average boy of average ability, Douglas swam in the middle stream of an adequate school, causing neither anguish nor excitement in his teachers or fellow students. Of medium height, his hair was somewhere between brown and beige, his complexion averagely flawed for a 15-year-old. His face, well, in the unlikely event of Douglas committing a crime, the witnesses would have had a hard time describing his face. He looked like a boy. Thought like one too, sometimes happy, often sad, occasionally filled with fear, anxiety, shame, rage, confusion, and lust, all of which he did his best to conceal. Adolescence was working its way through his year like scarlet fever. You could smell it in the corridors. This was the chrysalis stage, personalities forming beneath oily, broken skin. One boy was transforming into the class comedian, another the heartthrob, another the political activist, this girl the genius, another the heartbreaker. The athletes performed their push-ups and squats. The actors and archetypes noisily found their voices, their rich inner lives and poetic souls. The windows of the music room rattled to outbreaks of a delish singing at lunchtime. Yet Douglas remained as dull and straightforward as lined A4. Then, with the new term and the spring, Miss Vishnesky arrived. Everything about Miss Vishnesky was different. The defiant buzz of the Miss and the bundles of high-scoring consonants in her name as she spelt it out on the whiteboard, the way she perched on the edge of her desk rather than hiding behind it, the way her dark eyes took them in, one by one, all of them, not just the poets and actors in the front row. Good news and bad news, I'm afraid. The bad news is that Mr. Arnold won't be teaching you this term. Ill health has meant that he'll be taking some time off. He may return, he may not, but while he's gone, you'll be in my hands. That, in case you hadn't realized, is the good news. The class laughed ingratiatingly, ingratiatingly, and Douglas Miller laughed too. They turned once more to Shakespeare's sonnets. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. He watched her as she read, holding the book high and pinched between finger and thumb like a chorister. She was fairly old. 28, 30 maybe, with black hair cut in a geometric bob and skin the colour of, of 